Cryptocurrencies were licking their wounds on Tuesday after prices plunged a day earlier with roughly half a trillion dollars was wiped from the crypto market. It comes amid concerns over the spillover risk to the global economy from Chinese property group Evergrande's troubles. Bitcoin, the world's biggest and best-known cryptocurrency, tumbled almost 10% on Monday to almost $40,000, its lowest level since August 7. On Tuesday, it recovered to trade at around $43,000. It comes after Bitcoin hit a near four-month high above $52,000 on September 6. But Bitcoin was not the only crypto to suffer. Smaller rival Ether, the coin linked to the Ethereum blockchain network, which is the second biggest cryptocurrency by market cap, fell more than 10% on Monday. Meanwhile, Cardano, Solana, and Polkadot shed between 7% and 12% on Monday. And the meme-based Dogecoin has slipped from 7th to 10th place on the coin market cap ranking. Welcome to Savvy Finance, a channel that keeps you updated on what is happening in the crypto space. Big thanks to all our viewers and subscribers. Why are cryptos plunging? Global markets started the week on a turbulent note after fears that Evergrande's troubles could lead to fallout for the Chinese and global economies prompted a sell-off in riskier assets. The Chinese property group Evergrande is facing a debt of $300 billion and possible collapse. On Monday, the company's Hong Kong-listed shares slid around 20%. There is concern a collapse could disrupt many markets, including cryptos. I think it's general investor behavior when you see investors getting more risky with what they're investing in and where they might not have the highest level of convictions, said Frank Downing, research analyst at cryptocurrency and blockchain-based development platform ARK. I think more short-term plays or leverage plays as soon as they start to see. Even if it's an unrelated market, something that is a risk of in nature gives them cause for concerns. He told Euro News Next. They're going to consolidate their investments to what they have the most conviction is. And if there have been people that have been moving into cryptos more recently that don't have that strong conviction, they'll also be the first ones to move out. However, Downing said the recent market turmoil does not come as a big shock. I think the high volatility of the asset class is something that we can kind of come to expect over the past few years. I also think in situations like the Evergrande that results in an equity drawdown in the US, it commonly spills over into cryptos as well, he said. Global investors are watching nervously as one of China's biggest property developers struggles to avoid defaulting on massive debts worth tens of billions of euros, fueling fears of possible wider shock waves for the world's financial system. China Evergrande Group owes over $300 billion. With interest payments of more than $110 million due this month alone, the company faces a major test. Economists expect Beijing to intervene if Evergrande and lenders can't agree on how to handle its debts. But any official resolution is expected to involve losses for banks and bondholders. Could Evergrande spark a global financial crisis in the same way the collapse of U.S. bank Lehman Brothers did in 2008? Here's an explanation of how we got here. What is Evergrande? Let's start with the basics. Evergrande Group, founded in 1996, is one of China's biggest builders of apartments, office towers, and shopping centers, and one of its biggest private sector conglomerates. The company says it has more than 200,000 employees and supports 3.8 million jobs in construction and other industries. Evergrande says it has 1,300 projects in 280 cities and assets worth 2.3 trillion yuan. Evergrande's founder, Zhu Jiayin, was China's richest entrepreneur in 2017 with a net worth of 36 billion euro, according to the Huron Report, a Chinese equivalent of the Forbes rich list. He tumbled down the list as tech billionaires like Alibaba's Jack Ma and Tencent's Ma Huiting overtook him but still ranked as China's richest property developer last year. He also topped Huron's 2020 list of philanthropists, giving away an estimated 2.8 billion yuan or 327 million euro. Evergrande's property empire has also branched out into electric vehicles, theme park development, health clinics, mineral water, and other businesses. Zhu built Evergrande on borrowed money, possibly even more so than rivals in an industry that depends on debt. As of June 30, Evergrande reported 2 trillion yuan, that is 263 billion euro of outstanding debts to bondholders, banks, construction contractors, and other creditors. Of that debt, 240 billion yuan or 31.6 billion euro was due within a year, down 28.5% from the end of 2020, but nearly triple Evergrande's 11.4 billion euro in cash holdings, according to the company financial report. In early 2021, Evergrande forecast its total annual transaction volume would surpass $310 billion. It reported $1.4 billion first half profit but says sales are weakening because news of its cash crunch is making would-be buyers nervous. Fears over the company's ability to service its massive debts have impacted its share price. Evergrande's Hong Kong traded shares have fallen 8-5% since early 2021. Its bonds are trading at an equally deep discount. But Evergrande is not the only reason for the cryptos losing their value. Cryptocurrencies are also possibly facing a clampdown by U.S. lawmakers and watchdogs, according to reports. 
Last week, the Wall Street Journal reported the Biden administration is preparing an array of actions, including sanctions to make it harder for hackers to use digital currency to profit from ransomware attacks. Downing said the regulatory environment in the United States is also affecting the crypto markets. If there have been people that have been moving into cryptos more recently that don't have that strong conviction, they'll also be the first ones to move out. The top U.S. regulator, the Securities and Exchange Commission, and primarily its chairman, Gary Gensler, have made several comments recently about the SEC role in potentially regulating crypto particularly taking aim at some of the new lending products, staking and stable coins that have attracted a lot of interest from investors. Things came to a head over Coinbase, the United States' largest cryptocurrency exchange. The SEC took a tough stance on Coinbase and threatened to sue it if it launched a lending product. On Monday, Coinbase bowed to pressure and scrapped its plans for the lending product. But there have been other global crypto concerns. In June, China and Iran temporarily banned Bitcoin mining due to it causing power shortages. Then in August, the price surged in anticipation of El Salvador using the cryptocurrency as legal tender. But the rollout in the Central American country was met by technical issues, which caused large sell-offs. However, El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukel, on Monday said the country had bought the dip in Bitcoin, adding 150 tokens to raise its total holdings to 700, about $32 million based on current pricing. The nation recently adopted Bitcoin as legal tender and controversial move that met with technical glitches and protests. Not everyone is selling, said Valkyries Wald. El Salvador's enthusiastic adoption of Bitcoin is one of the reasons why prices have been trending higher and recently hit a four-month high. Still, the market has a way to go before recovering losses since a sell-off in May. On a day like today, where you have the perfect storm, I think people just go to. What can I sell quickest? What do I have access to at 2 in the morning, said Scott Bauer, chief executive officer at Prosper Trading Academy. If they're holding crypto, which is obviously an around-the-clock market, maybe that's the first place they look, he said adding that the news out of China is a negative for the crypto space. Well, cryptos bounce back. I think there will be a bit of one realization when you see a sell-off that's triggered by a completely unrelated event like Evergrande of money flowing back in, said Downing. He said once the concerns over Evergrande are over, investors will want to know the specifics of government regulation, be it a larger or smaller crackdown of sorts, that will reduce some of the ambiguity and give investors more confidence, he said, adding he believes the SEC and Gary Gensler are not anti-innovation and they want to see generally focused on investor protection. As some clarity comes out, I think more investors will be willing to move into the space, even if it is saying that certain products aren't allowed or require a heightened level of regulation in their filings. Just removing that ambiguity will be a positive thing, he said. Here at Savvy Finance, we love it whenever there is a dip in the market because it gives us an opportunity to add more crypto to our portfolio. Keep buying, guys, because believe it or not, Bitcoin will get to a million dollars someday, especially with the continuous printing of fiat by governments all over the world. Buy the dip if you can. Till our next video, stay savvy.